let's go ahead and use this app I just created to create anything that we want. So if I wasn't a techie person, I wasn't a programmer, I might say want an Excel document that has something on it. So for example here, I'll just go Excel has, I don't know, uh, two columns of the latest crypto price data from Binance with a third column saying pink elephants create and let's go and have the program go and build that anything we just asked it to build and there we go we now have a file that has popped up over here let's go and open that up and we can actually see that has gone and created that file which was a very randomly requested file but there we go nonetheless we have our crypto symbol we have our price this is definitely the current price of bitcoin and there we go we have pink elephants in the third column now this was not pre-programmed it was not pre-engineered i've not pre-programmed any libraries for excel other than packages that i've pre-installed with python etc so how is this actually working well let me give you another example so what i'm going to go and do is simulate us being in a web environment so i'm going to go and delete this file that just got saved by python and i'm going to restart my server again over here and i'll walk you through what's going on but let's go and do another example instead of excel let's do one for word and i'm going to say word has three paragraphs about the dangers of wombats attacking i don't know squirrels in a comedy fashion right let's go and create that and see what it comes up with and we've got a document that has been returned to us let's open it up now i'm on a mac so my word looks very very strange it won't look like word if you're on a pc but here we go the dangers of wombats attacking squirrels da -da -da, in a word document all right not that impressive but still quite fun let's go and do one more before we get into the details of how i've coded this and put it together so let's delete that i'm going to restart my server again over here all right now let's create a pdf so forward slash pdf has a title cool cars with a heading bmw uh, x1 versus audi q3 and a subtitle saying yo this is awesome create and here we go we have a pdf that's just appeared here and there we go bmw x1 versus audi q3 yo this is awesome and it's even attempted to put some kind of graph here but anyway that's a bit of fun now what is actually going on here how is this application actually running without being pre-programmed and I don't really have a word for this. I'm sure one does exist, so I'm probably not the first person to this. This has probably been done many times before I've come along, but I'm gonna just call this meta AI engineering because what's happening here is we have some code, which I'm gonna show you now, which tells AI to generate some text, which is code, which that code is then stored as code and executed all in the same go. And so what we have going on over here is we have our front end here right now. So if I just refresh that, here's my React front end. So I can interact with this, tell it Excel or maybe even PowerPoint, although I haven't got PowerPoint working yet. There's lots of things I can tell it to go and do. That's my front end. My back end is actually over here is Python, right? So here's the back end. So what I have going on here is I have my uh, open, A open AI here code being generated and I found right now with what's available at OpenAI right now I can't access for example the chat GPT backend but I'm pretty sure that's using a lot of the other existing backends too and I have here text DaVinci 003 which I found to work the best for this I did try code or codex or code sorry DaVinci 002 whatever and none of the other codex 
uh, models, etc., would cut the model off where I needed needed it to, but text DaVinci 003 would. It's also more expensive to run. So nonetheless, this is what it's doing, right? So it's going to query that model over there. And then when it gets the text, it's going to go and write that text to a file. So here I have my query file. This is the actual code that OpenAI wrote. And then in a separate call, I'm actually calling that code. So if I go up here on fast API, that's the web server that I'm using over here. It's actually calling the code. So here it's going and executing that query. So it imports that library and goes ahead and executes that and outputs a file. That file is then exported back to react. And here we go, you now have a user who can get anything they want. So Excel has, uh, I don't know, three columns with 100 random numbers between one and 100 create and so they can go and basically make anything that they want without having to know any code and without the application being very rigid in what it can or can't do let's go and have a look at our file over here see what that looks like and there we go we've got three columns with completely randomly generated numbers now this is very much in its infancy because it's the equivalent of going to say something like this over here i'll clean this up i'm right now on the bing one here i'm on the dev microsoft edge so it's just like being on chat gpt basically and i could just say something like you know write me python code which creates a uh, or an excel file with three columns with random numbers or whatever, right? And it's the same thing, except we're doing this through the OpenAI API, getting the text response, and rather than showing the code, having the code actually save and execute like it just showed you. You know, this really took me one day to go and build. If I can create a tool that can create anything for people that don't know coding, and that's just me. There's a, lot, there's a lot of people who are a heck of a lot more talented than I am. Also people that are working in teams, etc., who understand, who are working much more closely with the tech, who are developing coding solutions, etc. It's quite interesting to think about what will the next steps of this be? Will I be able to write a text input to have an AI generate a trading bot for me or ask it to put together a presentation which is like phenomenally good. That's where it will be in the future. So I think this is very, very interesting because, you know, I was watching a chap, um, I forget his name, but he he's on the channel Computerphile, really interesting guy. And he's saying, you know, technologies happen on this sigmoid curve. And I would argue that we're really at the very start of a sigmoid curve here, right? There's going to be some early adoption going on over here with these technologies. But I've shown you that you can use this AI text to go and have programs, write programs that run programs. And so you have to ask the question, what is the limit to this? How far can it go? Now, this is available as well on Code Raiders here too. This is not a free package, by the way, but you could go and create this yourself. I've just shown you the code and the logic for how to do it. But this is about 14 or 15 dollars if you want to go and buy the code feel free supports me supports the channel but just go over to code raiders and there's a walkthrough taking you through how to install it how to set up your python packages etc and also just note that this is far from perfect right so there are going to be bugs in this too for example the ai is not always right it might give you some code but didn't import the package or there's a package it wants to import that you've not pre-installed with python Right, so there's these sort of bugs that can be overcome. But nonetheless, I thought this was quite unique, quite interesting, and a very, very different take in terms of what I think these generative AI models are capable of in real time today. And as they improve, the programs that can create programs will improve. So I think it's interesting for you and I as programmers and as coders and as software engineers, we have to think, where can we stay ahead? How can we make use of these tools? And this is one of the ways I think we can do it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, take care. Talk soon.